Yeah, it's not just the film is not just about the festival, you know. It's, it's about, you know, people, the people who really start the steel band movement, right? Who struggle for it, who push it forward. You know? It's about the instrument. You see them nice instruments that will be playing any festival and thing. But where they really come from, from the old long time instruments, the old you know, tenor kittle and all them old, old, old to the punting that used to be sung in bad and making noise long time to these refined instruments, right? All of that, the people who bring it there, the whole evolution of the, the steel band, that is what we're dealing with. The history of the steel band is long with you. There are so many persons who contributed, known and unknown, and those who have passed beyond. And this is a very, very, very good. For it must be known that the steel band was originated in Trinidad developed by Trinidadians, young Trinidadians and fellows, you may say, who had something to eat, something to somewhere to sleep. And they have given this instrument, the 20th, this, this instrument for the 20th century from the world, and we must be recognized, we must, we must be known that is ours. I still remember, you know, see these fellows coming down with this big bamboo, and their music, and they're coming down the road, bottle and spoon. But I know our old tune, I used to hear them sing as a little boy coming on. Pam party pee lim pim 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 pam 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 pim 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 iron and drums on the streets. The greater part of the steel bands all came from areas where you had the Soratia or Rada, or where the African religion was practiced, where you had the drums and the sticks and so on. When I first went to the Panyard, my first experience, I, it just took me back to Africa. Because uh, the pan, I mean, the music of the pan, it, it, it's it just, it's another, you know, I hear a lot of similarities in the music of Balafon in, in Africa, the music of Mbira. You know, you have a lot of different traditional African instruments. But even in the iron, with the steel that you play, is part of the original instruments that is used. Because I asked the question, I went to a feast, what they call a, a ebo or some, something like that, the religious ceremony, and I saw this fellow chime a ho. So I asked the question, what is it all about? And he told me it's a welcome song. It is chiming for an entity, or what they call a power. A certain power, they have to chime this piece of steel. So I got an idea where the steel came from, along with the drum. And I spent a lot of time in West Africa, and East Africa, and North, and I see kind of like this universal movement of music. Um, I saw a lot of similarities in the spiritual uh, 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 evocation of the music from the pan. The Steelman Minister will have to say they inherit a sort of a stigma. The stick fighter, the drums, this was very important again because the stick fighter who fought all about in various years that they had in Port of Spain. They use the drums, and they, 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 it's the same sort of people that come into this with the bamboo and with the steel band. So they, when, when people see, they say, you, you, you with this, you are Kaladiwa, you are Bajon, you know, they call kind of names. 
Long before they were actually a steel band on the streets, I saw and heard pan beatings on the streets during carnival period. The people who were most famous for that was in Knockabout All About Sailors. Carnival they, they knock two pans and knock the pans, they would pour water and they make a joyful noise and dance and sing on the street. That, I mean, that was even before the time of what we called Fancy Sailor. For it evolved from the knockabout to the what you call Fancy Sailor, which was in the 30s, and then eventually what you call the King Sailor. So the pan as I know it, or the steel band, which I rather just say the steel band, at the period when it came in, it, 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 it sort of married with the bamboo. So bamboo and the steel band play together. And eventually, the pan fills out the bamboo. The first pan that you were able to distinguish was the pan that carried the, from the carried over from the drums, which we call a bass. It was, the West eventually called it a, a dodo. It's from the same rhythm of the drum. That was the driving force of the steel band in that period. Well, eventually, they named that pan a kittle. They had the bass kittle, and then you had the kittle. Well, the kittle was the first instrument from which they were able to play any kind of melody. But the coming of World War II, in 1941 or 42, they said, they drove them off the streets. When they, when they chased the fellows off the streets, they didn't sort of put down the instruments. They went about innovating and inventing. But V Day, when they declared, well, war ceased, then this, the fellows came on the road with an instrument like this. So this is what you call the mother pan. At the big, we call it a ping pong. So this is the mother ping, this is the mother ping pong of the 55 gallon drum that you have today. Between this and the 55 gallon drum, this is the intermediate pan that came about. Then came the Ellie Manet period. When Ellie Manet brought about a new idea and he reversed the procedure and grooved the pans as you know them today. So Taro. This film is only about the pioneers and the history of the steel band. We're not only dealing with the history, we're dealing with the instrument especially because um, the persons who make the instrument, the tuners, are some of the most important people in the steel band movement. You have persons who are innovators, inventors, structurers, builders, tuners of the instrument. Then they go so far to also to be good players. They are the only pioneers. Those are the persons like Neville Jews, Ellie Manet, Anthony Williams, and in recent time people as Booty Marshall and the great and the great deceased, the Doll Charles. Love until here we come. Love until singing praises to your son, 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 son. for love and tears. Here we come. Let me start the walk. Let me start now. Walk. Somewhere up in love and tears. Many years ago. Used to follow him to and fro. What he used to do? He used to use it up. Uh, well, yeah, um, first, I see like a drum that is good, though. Sinking it with that big sledge. Then you draft out your notes. When you draft out your notes, then you had to groove it. You know, it, you know, beat it back. Then you groove it. Then all of this, you cut it according to length. And when you fire it up a little bit, you put it on a little fire, you burn it, and you pitch it, get ready for chroming. When I was really born in St. Vincent Street, when I was a little boy, my mother and my father moved to John John. And it's there I started to see Steve from them as a little boy. Talking about six, seven years old. Who did the arm? Central BC school, I just spray on them. You know what I mean, doing the thing. When I hear the melody, start to come into the pan and thing, and I used to play more organ and thing. So, I run away and used to go build our house. 
doctor. Don't be fan because my mother didn't like steel band at all. She wanted me to be a doctor. I started working on a small biscuit tin as the first fan. I put four notes and made it into and played Mary had a little lamb. The Americans had a, a bass down on Mukurap one. They had a little abundance of all the drums scattered there, dumped there. So I got uh, one day a roller put on the drum on a Saturday work on the oil drum. And then I wanted to tune too, so I got up in you know, in the bush and them days here in the back of Levante they have you know a lot of little ravine and bush up things work in there. We light up we fire and drop into the pan. We don't just always see spree and them do not in the under. At the time we tried to burn a pan below the house. And in those the house I talking about was about two feet off the ground, you know, a low house. So we get in below there and we light the fire. Two or three feet of right here. And we light that fire and the fire get out of control because we know the house are a lot of rubbish. But you talk about it. This fire came out in 1952. It's, it's designed in Fort Sanchez. That is C F C D E F. I drew some straight lines from the center to the outside of the pan to the edge of the drum and made some straight lines crossing and it appeared to be a spider web and somebody said it looked like a spider web called it spider web and so it got his name spider web but first thing happened we get a old pan from tokyo and i'm trying to tune it over and so from that age that young age i started really because it's a pretty harmonica and man, harmonica helped me in later days because when I discover harmonics, which is a new order, the order they use today in children's band, it's really harmonica. By hand you over tones and I started to experiment. I experiment for a long while. And then about in 1956, I started to, 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 to get the harmonics because I experiment for a while, you know? And I started to get the harmonics. And from there, silver stars and most of the bands come along with the, um, the, to tune the bands and things. But in those days, you know, they had no money and things. After that, I started working on pan on stands, the second pan. I put them on, a, I made a wooden stand for it and I hung it on the stand because it was it sounded a bit better when it was hanging. I noticed when it rests on the leg, it kills some of the reverberation. I wanted to use the chromatic bass on the road. So uh, we couldn't put the pan around the neck on the road because we had to get the bass, and the bass contained three drums at the time. So we couldn't carry three oil drums around the neck. So we had to put it on wheels, so I put pan on wheels in 1956. Experience too was, was, was entertaining the Americans on Chagaramas. We used to play down there two or three nights a week. But then in, in, uh, around 56, when Eric Williams and them come and put up power and they decided to um, take over the base now. They, they say, well, the base now, uh, the, 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 the entertainment that I cut down there. And I was forced to come and open, organize my band, reorganize my band for, for parties on the outside, you know, to organize a bigger band. I used to use about eight men down there. Money was small, but it's a share. But the change started happening when they, they, they organized more competition, and then they started open things like association, and then fellas experimenting, you know, and uh, well, the place getting more um, enlightened, and uh, just so the steel band was progressing because the steel band started to play, uh, started to play a lot of great music before they even had uh, instruments probably tuned. You know what I mean, Griffith, um, Griffith and them when they went to task school days, pan just song we find out. But they you know they had something. Just around that time too. Um, pan used to get a lot of parties. Sometimes they have three steel bands, one with The task school made a great effect on the steel band. It introduced the chromatic steel band. Prior to that, only the ping pong was tuned to the chromatic scale. But Griffith wanted a chromatic steel band. Joseph Griffith was the musical director. So he introduced the chromatic tenor bomb, the bass, and the double second, and the alto pong. So that was how Taspo came to be a popular steel band. 
and they will play almost any type of music on the pans with the chromatic steel band. In 1951, Tasper went to Britain to perform at the Festival of Britain. And there they played on television and at the Savoy Hotel. And uh, as a Mecca dance hall, a chain of dance hall called the Mecca dance halls. And then they went to Paris and played at the Medrano Circus. I always trying to introduce a um, wider range of bands. And until I end up with the man divine, you know, trying to cut down the size of the steel band because I find it economically it was now profitable. But the best um, thing was in the late half when I get on to trying to elongate the notes. You know, like the note and you could um, between the, the, the thing and the decay, the evolution of the decay, it, 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 it could linger instead of you had to roll. You could roll too if you want, but I feel that um, you know, a continuous song, when you strike it, a continuous song. But then, you had to control that, you know. So there's where a mechanical part had to come in and thing. I was on a good thing, and then I had a disastrous fire, they burned out everything. So I never go back into that. Then in 90 centers, I had a whole program. 90 centers, I had a whole program of um, the Sparrows. I you know for them for about 22 years, you know. And he liked experiments too. So both of them meet up. And then we bring out this quadrophonic, you know, in martial tones. Anything, he consulted me because, you know, I am more experienced in the tuning than him. But he have ideas and we used to work together. I miss him a lot for that. Say we got to find the hammer.